Hello, everybody, and uh, good evening to all the uh, beautiful ladies and the good-looking gentlemen around. Yes. Okay, my name is Monty, and I'll be starting off this night and to in introduce the host. And um, welcome to the, uh, what you call the uh, workshop, and open by with all the Crystal Toastmasters and uh, everybody else. <laughs> welcome. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I enjoyed doing comedy, and I started co doing comedy in 1989, and of course, I have a partner and did with Logie since 1999, one of the longest uh, Chindian partnership in town. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we, we were surprised how a Chinese and Indian can work together. <laughs> and this, the reason is because we both don't need money. <laughs> but we, we have the same goal. And uh, you know, that, that day when we do the presentation, one of the things that we should talk about was that uh, the secret to writing comedy is a few things. Number one, of course, is putting the butt on the chair, put, and then putting the pen in the hand, and then you must have the know-how. But the last thing, what was it? What was the fourth element? Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's partnership, okay? Partnership, community. And uh, I, I show you this that on my own, until the age of 35, I have done nothing. And uh, uh, we haven't produced any long play. Logi, on his own, at the age of 45, he's produced nothing. But together, within a, six, 12 to 18 years, we produced over 40 comedies, 90 minutes each. So, uh, so the, don't underestimate the power of partnership and community. So this is what we want to do. So, okay, I'm not going to lecture. I'm going to start off with a, a story, you know. Um, 53. And uh, just a couple of months ago, the most popular thing I heard about was Tinder, so I signed up for Tinder. At 53, you signed up for Tinder. The only ladies that come after me was insurance agents. <laughs> you know, and after that, you know, when you realize at 53, insurance agents don't come after me. There's another type of agent, Nirvana Memorial Park agent. <laughs> they come after me. They're a different type of people. And I also have a very funny week last week. I had this retro week. A retro week where I you know, was looking at things and you know, a few things came to mind. One is on China and India, and then about movies and all the old things I went through. So I just realized China and India should merge together as a country, you know, merge, merge, in, merge into one country. You know, because there are many similarities between China and India. You know, in China, we produce cheap IT equipment very fast. Yeah. India, they produce cheap IT guys very fast. <laughs> so it's beautiful, they should merge together. And then the other, the other thing is, in India, we have Bollywood movie. You know, wow, China, you know, we have the Hong Kong movie, the China movie, or two, one thing in common, we exaggerate like nobody business. I mean, case in point, I was looking at the old movie, Ranjidi Khan. Okay, very famous. If you don't know him, it's not because he's not famous, it's you are not famous. <laughs> <laughs> so, this movie, Ranjini Khan, police inspector chasing a bad guy, okay? He was 100 meters away, the bad guy he was running through a fence, seven foot high. He opened the door, went through the wall, the, the, a, a, a brick wall, a, a brick fence. He went through the wall, and Ranjini Khan, even without looking, he started to waste his time. He just took out his pistol and threw up into the air, flying. And of course, Ranjini Khan would just fly up into the air, do a somersault, pick up the side gun from his ankle, shoot the trigger on that gun and the gun will hit the guy over the fence without looking and he got shot in Bombay and died in Madras. <laughs> so there is something in common, you know. But Chinese movies, same thing also. Always, the most famous, my favourite actor is uh, Zhao Yun Fat. Ah, <laughs> in the Brotherhood of Man, he will have his hair all gel up together. Whoa. And then he's going to kill people. It's a gangster movie, but gangster in China will be all in suit and wearing trench coat. And there will always be wind blowing from somewhere. <laughs> and the trench coat is all, and always facing the front of the main actor. And the trench coat will be flying, flying up and down. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And right at the right time, Zhao Yun Fat with his left hand, dig into his trench coat and take out a five kilo machine gun. Of his left hand, and then with his right hand, you take out a shotgun, another five kilo, and then start shooting, dang, 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 unlimited bullets. And then once that is gone, 
and then dig into another machine gun and dig in, in it. And they, and they say, all the while, the French clothes are fl is flying. <laughs> wow. Oh, you love that, isn't it? That's Malaysia. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a China and India should, should merge together, you know? And of course, in terms of politics, China is a very restricted country. And they should merge with India, which is very free flow. You put them together, you get Singapore. <laughs> 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 uh, it's something we worked on the other day. Eh? So, now, to start off this evening, we have a wonderful friend, um, someone who's been starting comedy for two years. He appeared in a lot of shows. He appeared everywhere, okay, because you cannot miss him. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, your host, who, who will introduce the uh, performance tonight, okay, Bob. Hey, how are you, ladies? Good evening. Yeah, this is the first. This is the first show. Open. This is the first open mic ladies' night show in Arada Mansara. Give, give your, give yourself a round of applause. Congratulations for coming here, and for be brave to be on stage and doing some comedy. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I'm Bob. Yeah, I'm Bob. It's short from Bobby. Yeah. It's short. I, I don't know I can do this, but can I? A little bit uh, dirty, uh, not dirty lah, not dirty lah. But can, can I? Can I? No, no, it's not X, it's X, but it's parental guidance lah, PG lah. So can I? Yeah, not hello lah. Yeah. yeah, I'm Bob, it's short from Bobby. I got it from my Malay friend that always call me, Hey, Bobby! Ah. But all the single ladies can call me baby. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> why, 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 why not? Why not? You all can call me baby lah. Yeah. By the way, I'm still single. Yeah. Yeah, with the face like this, I'm still single. Cannot believe lah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still single, but my shirt is double. <laughs> because I eat triple. Yeah. My shirt is couple lah. <laughs> By the way, for tonight, we're starting off with a comedian. Of course, lah, ladies comedian. Lah. We, we're going to start with the, the name, uh, yeah, Tan. How many tons there is? I don't know. Yeah, one ton. <laughs> I bet you can cook some one ton me, right? Ah. By the way, give a round of applause to one ton. Eh, no, no, one ton. <laughs> Give a round of applause to Tan Sobi. Hey, shake hand, please. Baby, shake hand. <laughs> okay, why are you so far? Can you please come nearer? I need audience noise. It's my maiden performance. Nearer, please. Yeah, maiden virgin performance. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. At, at, at my age, if I'm still a virgin, <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> because I can't go to grave and my tombstone say, rest in peace, unbroke, unopened. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this, this is something that is told by a friend. She says, intelligence is like an underwear. You should have it, but don't show it. <laughs> and I believe in that, because I was very intelligent when I was young. I think among all my siblings, I'm the best. My father always thinks so. So, but I kept it quiet. You must hide it, you know, because I come from the generation where even your proudest assets, you've got to hide it. You know Champoji that time? Like you said, Chow and Fat, I was from Champoji's age. She has breasts, but when she goes for a Kung Fu movie, every morning she got to tie this up. Cannot show. That was the generation. Of course, I didn't have anything to tie, like, so I still, <laughs> I could show. But what I need, want to tell, tell you is that during that generation, I'm a vintage. Everything, you have to be modest. True or not, Caroline? You're from my generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even if you are pretty, you have to say you're not, all right. So what happened was, because everyone has to be modest, the most popular brand of sanitary tower is modest. 
And I don't know whether you have used it before or not. Caroline has. <laughs> Bonnie, I don't know. She probably come from the Tempex age. <laughs> and you're laughing, eh? IUD, I know. <laughs> the era of IUD, and you guys don't know. If you don't know what is IUD, no, don't ask. Uh, you know Tempex. No, I always bought one that for my mom. Oh, you bought. I said, but you don't use lah. <laughs> okay, never mind. So, those were the days. Eh? So, Tempex. If you have used Tempex, not, not Tempex, Modest, you probably have used panties that are cotton made by your mother. <laughs> and yes, yeah, she's laughing. I use underwear that is made by my mother. And I think they are nice, very comfortable, but they are not good looking. I, I mean, it's not supposed to be giving you any, any advantage when you wear that kind of panties. But what happened was, it took a long time before the lace panties came. See, see, you must have got lace panties when you were in the teens. <laughs> Congratulations. It took many years before I got my lace panties. It's not something like Victoria's Secret, you know. It's like a, not even bikini cut. When you have a lace panties in the 70s, it means it's a full panties. The only thing lace is the trimming. So when you have that kind of lace panties, it triggers a clarion call for all the ladies. It's about time to flaunt it. But I'm telling you, it's not as radical as showing your panties or losing your bra. It's about now, since you have a panties that is decent enough, you can hang it outside. <laughs> outside your house. Okay, those were the days if you have your mother's making you the panties, you really can't show it because you will be using it until all the colors will fade off. It really is not meant for the public. Baby, you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> so, what happened was, so with that comes the time when you, you have to like flound it. Lah. But it took me so long. I, Really, I'm a slow starter. By the time I need to flound it, it was too late. The skirt went so went below the knees. I took a job as a lecturer. I can't wear skirts that are like that. So I had to cover the wrinkled knees at that time. Because my mother always say, don't wear shorts, so your knees are wrinkled now. So, so stop wearing shorts. And you know, if you have skirts this long, you can't show your lace panthers. So what showed up? your bra. Often enough, your bra strap will slip. You know, lesson number two, they say, um, stupidity is like a bra. No matter how you try to hide it, it will show. <laughs> right? Yes, you know, isn't it? The other day, you pulled my bra strap. <laughs> so what happened was, I realized, when I want to flound my intelligence, Nothing was there. All the grey matter shrunk. And the only thing I could flung was some stupid move. And I knew it when I went for Tai Chi lesson. I thought I was very enthusiastic and I stood right in front. And, you know, I'm not very good at hearing things. I'm very visual. Even visual also not that good. So what happened was after a few moves, the teacher said, Sobi, I think you better stand behind. I say, why? Kung Fu? Sifu, why? She said, you're making all the wrong move and people behind you are following all. <laughs> they are losing what I thought. Stand behind. And it's happened the same thing during yoga. Just recently, and when I was like, I happened to stand behind a lady who still, who is worse than me. She can't hear, she can't see. So, so when the teacher say move the right leg, she moved the left leg, and I also moved the left leg. And she's, the teacher sarcastically say, you know, you have to work on your visual, don't just work on your audio. <laughs> and I said, are you referring to me? <laughs> so, this is what happened about showing bra. And this is lesson number two. And I think time is up. If you want to go for lesson number three, come for the next show. Another round of applause. No? No? 
now let's let's invite Logi for a few words. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, gentlemen also here. Very good. I have followed Tan Sobi for 20 years. <laughs> so when she says she's a maiden speaker here, I'm surprised. <laughs> she, <laughs> and this is a maiden event, eh? she was saying. Now, Sobi has got one trick up her sleeves when she takes part in this table topic contest. Table topic, you give her a topic, she will talk. And her favorite topic is women's rights. Any topic you give, she will talk about women's rights, all the women will clap. I was in Kota Kinabalu on that year, the district level, she won first. <laughs> give her a round of applause. <laughs> okay, so she is in her element when she talks about women. So she doesn't have to train herself compared to most people here. She's, her attitude is always towards women, supporting women, making fun with women. So her attitude is very well tuned towards humor, especially towards women. Okay? So she made some very nice points. Huh? She established that intelligence, you got to hide it. Okay, so she had something to take all the way, and the whole topic has got a theme. You've got to hide, 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 and then you expose. So you can follow her with the opening statement itself, it's very strong. And she made one statement, she audience participation, she asked a gentleman, he said uh, he bought modest for his mother, and then she asked, uh, Do you use? He said, No. You know what you can do after that? Yeah. Don't worry, you will use when you're old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so now, now why do people clap when you make a joke? It's not easy to get people to clap, you know, because when you tell the truth, most people hide the truth. So men don't like to say they wear pampers. Huh? So don't worry, you'll wear, you'll wear pampers when you're older. Okay, so and you all love it, isn't it? You want to make fun of him, huh? Ah. So this is a point, whenever you tell the truth which is suppressed, people will clap. Because every time it is suppressed, okay, and then you bring it up, wow, you get a clap. It's not easy to get a clap. You can get a laughter, but if you can get a clap, very good. And one thing I, I would want you to say more clearly is front it. If you have it, front it. Uh, so I didn't hear the word clearly. How many of you know what is front? Ah, very good. Others, not sure. Okay, so you have to find out how many people understand. So if you've got enough people to laugh for it, good enough. <laughs> okay, when it comes to bra, okay, my stories about bra is pasamalam bra, the one that is so tight, women always do. <laughs> okay, see, so you got laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so don't buy pasamalam bra. <laughs> it bites. <laughs> you don't need men for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my point here is comedy or humor you don't create, you discover. So if she goes to pasamalam, she takes the bra and then she is able to do it. Okay? So Every time in comedy, pick from somewhere and put it in your topic. Okay? That's all I've got to say. Give a round of applause. Everybody, uh, energizer. Laughter energizer. Can everybody stand up, please? So, sometimes you need to energize the crowd. Huh? Laughter, people laugh how many times a day? Uh, children laugh 260 times a day without jokes. Adults laugh only 15, 16 times. And that, and sometimes when nowadays children form three, you tell a joke, tomorrow they laugh. <laughs> so much of stress, so much of tuition. Okay? So let's do the one meter laughter. Okay? I remember doing comedy with Monty in her boss's place. Her boss is a person who laughs. What company was it last time when you were? Ah, he's, she has a boss who laughs. Okay, very rare. Okay. How do you measure clock? Like this, huh? one, this is one yard. This is one meter. Okay. 
So we are going to do one meter laughter. Everybody put your hands like this. Okay. Say, A, 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 A. <laughs> the other side. A, 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 A. <laughs> In Sweden, they only got 55 days of sunlight. Yes. 55 days of sunlight. And I've been to some cold countries, especially Russia. People hardly laugh because in Malaysia, they laugh, isn't it? Why in cold countries they don't laugh? It's very cold. Okay? <laughs> Malaysia, they say, you got a sunny disposition because it's hot sun. Okay? <laughs> so in Sweden, only 55 days sunlight. They don't laugh one meter laughter. They, da they laugh like this. Huh? Put everybody put your fingers like this. One centimeter. Ha! <laughs> ah, that's all they laugh. <laughs> so you're happy you're in a sunny country. Yeah? Okay, I'll hand you over to the... <laughs> Yeah, speaking about yeah, speaking about bra. My yeah, my brother, my mother used to pick one for me. Yeah, my mother. Mom, why 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 do I need to wear this bra? My mom said, "This is serious because your breast is bigger than mine." <laughs> mom, thank you, mom. <laughs> I will be, I will wear this, but now I don't wear it. Saja nak tunjuk, my breast is bigger than yours. <laughs> By the way, uh, a lot of my friends ask me to go on a diet. Bob, please go on a diet. Please, it's for your own health. Yes, I will go on a diet if I have no money to pay for my own food. Yeah. yeah. And now, I have no money. So, I have no on diet. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by the way, have you ever heard a quote saying that choose the job that you love and you never have to work a single day in your life? Yeah. yeah. I have been doing stand-up comedy for two years. I have been doing stand-up comedy and I love it. For two years, I have been jobless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> bringing the next comedian on stage. Uh, she, yeah, she came today without her partner, Clyde. So, give a round of applause to Bonnie. She followed Sobi for 20 years. I followed her for more than 20 years, more than 25 years. <laughs> While she is lengthy, I am short and sassy. <laughs> While she will flaunt it, I will keep and hide it very well, being an intellectual. <laughs> Last Wednesday, they gave me a topic, talk about France. They say, why? I say, I like the French way. Because they have a new president. And they say, that president is about time. You know why? He is like the president Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump has a wife that is 25 years younger. And our new French president has a wife that is 20 years older. That's for the woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say I like to do it the French way. While Shashida said she likes everything Spanish, I said let's try the French way. So I want to go to France to experience the French way so that my auntie will, there will not come and every time say, Bonnie, why is he so young one? No. Whenever I took a young boy back home, like for during Chinese New Year. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, you know I am single like Sobi, but not so desperate to flaunt my bra, to flaunt my <laughs> fancy out front. I still like to do it the French way, intellectually. And then they will say, have you tried the French kiss or not? And I reply, you think leh? <laughs> and I can only think that I have only tasted the French toast, unfortunately. <laughs> That's the French way that I know. Then there was this teammate, Jerry, his name. He said, talk about the, the French snobbish way. Just like he was being superior, like Joanne, sitting on the high chair. And he said, you can talk about their superior French way. Then I remember a story. I said, oh, yeah, I want to go to the Eiffel Tower one time in Paris. And I was like, how to go there? 
So I asked this couple, how do I go to the Eiffel Tower? I speak no English, he said. So that's the French snobbish way, not our friendly English way. So what else is about the French way that I like? Besides being young, that I can bring a young man home, even though I'm over 50s, as Sobi would say, right? Use modest. Use modest is another way. <laughs> but I will do it the French way, be, being young, being happy, and ooh la la. So this is short and sassy. Back to you. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Now, okay. Now, for the one who evaluating Bonnie, I I call Sha. Give a round of applause. Thanks, Bob. Okay, I've got a few notes here. I thought when you first came out, uh, that was very nice that you played off your friend, right? So that was a very good tactic. Um, and I liked your style. It's like, as you say, like, you know, sassy, mellow, and sassy the way you deliver. Um, also, I thought your French sounded Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> but I get your story very well. You said the, the core is the French way, right? And you're saying making differences. Um, you may have noticed that the laughters were like intermittent. It's your style, but if you want to get more laughters, I think more exaggeration in, uh, in the parts where you deliver the punchlines, more exaggeration, then you'll get like more heated laughs, I think. Um, yeah, for the, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Shah. Mm, by the way, mademoiselle, mademoiselle parlez vous français? Oui, oui. Uh, by the way, uh, following, uh, following up the, on the evaluation, I call Mr. Logi. Master! Always try to make fun of your name, if you can. See, I always say my name is, full name is Logendron. It means Prince of the Universe. Okay, but my short name is Logan. Don't call me Longan. <laughs> Okay, so whenever I tell this to children, they will, the whole day when I do a training with them, they'll purposely call me Longan. Okay. So whenever you get a chance, make fun of it. So, Bonnie, you talked about uh, the French. Yeah? So they, they expect you to say something in French. So if you don't have, I'm going to give you now. Okay. So when you talk about the French kiss, you know what's the French kiss? Full mouth-to-mouth -mouth kiss. In England, it is known as the French kiss. In France, it is known as the English kiss. <laughs> okay. So, then you said about you not, you've been single for a long time. May, you can be, I'm giving one line which uh, Monty and I used. Uh, I don't know why uh, men chase after me, uh, but they don't want to settle down with me. <laughs> you said that, uh, as he told you about it? Huh? You know why? Just like dogs, they chase after a car, but they got no intention of driving it. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. So I'm giving Monty and Logie jokes to you, huh? Okay. And another one. The French words. Huh? If for many years uh, you went out um, with one guy and then suddenly he didn't marry you. What do you say in fr French? Life is like that. Okay, so you say, c'est la vie. Everybody say, c'est la vie. So, why didn't you get married to the guy after going with him for 10 years? C'est la vie. But if you got a French kiss, you say, c'est si bon. Everybody say, c'est si bon. That, that means it feels so good. Uh, Okay, so for Bonnie, my message is don't go into narrative, go into dialogue. So when you're talking as though you're talking to someone, it's better than narrating the story. So you'll be in the scene. Okay, so everybody stand up for one more uh, laughter. 
okay? Uh, this one is a Chinese one to trying to get children to eat fruits, okay? Everybody, pai pai cho, pai pai cho, se ko ko, li yak ko, mo yak ko, po po yao yak ko. C'est la vie, mon ami. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the only extent of uh, that's the only extent of French that I know. Not, another one is. <laughs> By the way. By the way, I, I, I used to audition as a, yeah, I used to audition as a Santa Claus in a mall. Yeah, I used to audition as one. But the thing is, I didn't get the part. Because they say, I'm not fat enough. <laughs> I, yeah, at the time, I didn't know whether I am, uh, uh, should I be happy or should I not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he didn't see me as fat. Yeah, I'm sure I should be happy. But at the same time, I didn't get the uh, the, the part. Uh, I should be the Santa Claus. Why? Okay. No. Right. Yeah. At that time, my my, my mind was jumbling. Lah. Uh, I should be. Uh, oh ho ho ho. Yeah. I tried. Yeah. By the way, uh, I'm inviting the next comedian on stage. Her name is Joey. Yeah, Joey! Joey! I am Joey, but I'm not from the Yap family. I'm not Joey Yap, the Feng Shui master. <laughs> I'm a working adult. It's because not, not I'm an adult, then I'm working. But I work, I work to help the government, to help the country, to boost up the economy. Don't get me wrong. I don't vote for a government agency. I don't vote for a lembaga hasil. <laughs> but I work in private sector. What is private sector? Private sector is like a pyramid. Everybody line up to the top. <laughs> so everybody had to stay on the line. To be outstanding, I need to cut the line and stay out of the line to be outstanding. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, good things. She she tried to be on stage, although she doesn't uh, feel the even one minute gap. But she's still on stage. Give up applause on her. Yeah. Kudos to you. Kudos to you, Joey. Now I'm inviting others than Monty on stage to give an evaluation. No time to write, <laughs> finish already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you start off very strongly uh, talking about Feng Shui Master Joey Yap. You said, yeah, Joey, but not Yap. Okay, there's um, attention grabber because everybody knows, uh, most people know about Joey Yap. Like, if, you, if the majority of the crowd are, are Chinese or, you know, um, or property developer or estate agent. <laughs> okay, so um, you said stay on the line. Okay, this one is like, uh, all lining up working for the uh, private sector. Uh, you can build on that one. Actually, you have a very good line to build on because Logi and myself, we used to have this line. You know, when you, uh, when you are lining up in the private sector, it's like a red race, you know, when you, even you end up, the race becomes still a red, okay? But, <laughs> but, you, but you, you have this thing. See, uh, you're, you see, you all are lining up like a line. You're climbing up. In the private sector, <laughs> in the government sector, you are kissing the government's back. In the private sector, when you climb up, you're looking at everybody else back. You know? <laughs> you know? So you can always add the line there. Uh, or use a better a nice, a nice word, a strong word. Uh, you, you're looking at all the posterior. <laughs> and then you can move on that. Um, this, and then the, the other word you use is you want to be outstanding. There are two things you can work on. Um, that on that particular thing, uh, think about uh, if I were to work on this one, uh, stay on the line of private sector. You can draw the line. What is like if I have not done this? I have done this. So you take two track, two tracks, lah. Either you take a linear, linear. That means it's like, okay. Private sector is go like this. I get this job done. I get this what? I get this reward. I look up. You know. The lateral one is what if I have not joined the private sector and decided to work on my own? You know? So you have a contrast. That you take a lateral path. 
So just think about that one, Loki. Anything? Uh, Joey. Do you, you know what Joey means? <laughs> ah, baby kangaroo. Ah, so make fun of your name. See, uh, I'm. Of course, you mentioned about Joey Yap. It didn't bring much laughter. It's just a, a correlation only. Jo when you say Joey, baby kangaroo, jump. I wish I had a man to jump on me. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I don't know whether you like that or not. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I be, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. <laughs> you can say a lot of things about jumping, a lot of kangaroos. Okay, one nice thing if you have dimples. What is this? The smallest description of the smallest thing in the world? A pimple on the dimple on the right cheek of an ant. <laughs> okay, a pimple on the dimple on the right cheek of an ant. So, when you talk about dimples, they will immediately relate to you. You have nice dimples. Okay? And when you say pyramid, it means, reminds me of uh, the Maslow's hierarchy pyramid, that the highest level is self actualization. When you go to the highest point, uh, when you are nearer to God, uh, that's the time when you're going to die, you go nearer to God, you know. Okay, self actualization. So, your speech was very short. We cannot bring out much. You have a nice uh, face, happy face, you can, people can relate to. Okay. By the way, by the way, I'm, I, I want to tell you guys something that I am 50% Malay, 50% Iban, but I am 100% um, proud Malaysian. Yay! Patriotism. By the way, yeah, my mom, my mother's side is uh, yeah, Iban, so Iban is very notorious with a uh, uh, hard-working tribe, a hard-working tribe because they used to uh, agriculture and hunting people and hunt, yeah, hunting people head. Ouch, yeah. And yeah, the Malay are very notorious with being lazy, so I think being the mix of them, I am very hard-working and with, uh, being lazy. Yeah. Um, by, by the way, <laughs> yeah. By the way, by the way, people people say that girl love uh, uh, likes the bad boys, right? People yeah. likes the bad boys. Yeah, I want to tell you guys something that I am really really bad because yeah, yeah, I'm bad because I uh, I used to puncture the tire, pop pop pop. I used to puncture all the tire of my car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nothing to do about that. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to be to 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 ngorat lah. Uh. So to to invite the next comedian is yeah, she may be the twin of Joanne Kam maybe, but I'm inviting I'm inviting Joanne on the stage. Give her all the applause. Maybe lah, Joanne Kam. Oh, Joanne Kam. So I have to eat more, right? To be Joanne come. <laughs> yeah, my name is Joanne. I, when I was young, me and my sister were in the same school. All our friends called my sister Panjang. So instantly, my friend called me. That's right. This is the Pande. So can you imagine like this, what they call? You guess. I like to observe fashion trends. How the change uh, of the fashion from long to short to minimum, and then back to long. So in my time, probably like you, should so be at your time, my time. <laughs> in, I stay in hostel, and all girls told by their mom have to wear petticoat. So the guy said, you are not hot, you are wearing two layer. If I were you, I would like sweat like, like what? I can't, I can't describe. <laughs> so yeah, in fact, we sweat a lot. And one of it, guys, boys just don't understand. Why always the inner layer longer than your skirt? Is that a fashion? I said, yeah, probably, it's a fashion. Don't you think the lace is nice? Yeah, they said, okay, right. At that time, also, 
men, guys, has their trend. That is, that time all black. They like to wear black, black pants, black blouse. Like, this is a good example of Bob. When they went to a party, it's like a crow party. All black except the thief. <laughs> so my ex-boyfriend purposely custom made a suit, black blouse and a black pants. And the cutting is just like a carrot, tight bottom and the loose at the hips. He only wore one time and he couldn't found it for a second time because his mom already thrown it somewhere, he couldn't get it. That's what I like about fashion. Guys, ladies, try and guess what is the latest fashion now? Pose. That a skirt you can find in the men's wardrobe. Thank you. Oh, wow. 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 She give a double meaning ending. Wow. 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 But. You know what is it? So, uh, I want to tell you this something. Uh, I think she meant that maybe, maybe the man secretly wearing skirts. Uh, understand, right? So, I'm inviting Logi. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. Oh, Sha. All right. Sha. Oh. Why not man, man, uh, Latalila Tamplum? So. Uh, Okay, Joanne, where's Joanne? Okay, so <laughs> always, if you can, make fun of yourself. Okay? Those days, my sisters and all wish to have quenching girls' school hairstyle. Okay? You know quenching girls' square, ladies? Okay? So I just say, I used to have this, and then now my hair is like this. How it became curly, I fried it in coconut oil. <laughs> I have the Maggie Me look. Okay? So whatever you can make fun of your hair, and because you're talking about fashion, eh? so because of because I'm crazy about fashion, it takes one to start a fashion, and this is Joanne's fashion, your hairstyle. Okay, it takes one. So you be the person who who is starting the fashion. Okay, that's it for the moment. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, um, I think. Uh, yeah, I understand you are image consultant, right? Used to, okay. I think, I've, um, of course, I work with Sheila, and of course, uh, Sheila gave me a, a very good line long ago, you know, we make fun of the ladies, you know. I said, you know, th in this country, this is the only country where you can tell the age of a wo woman by the size of the handbag. 23, 30, 40, and when it becomes this small, you are gone. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, I, 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 I just thought from a job or whatever you do, you just make fun of it. Um, yeah, there was when, the, when the skirt, when, when, the, when the petticoat is longer than the skirt, it's called Sunday is longer than Monday, if you have that. Okay, uh, we can say sweat like a horse, uh, but um, that's for a man. <laughs> for a man, it would be sweat like a horse, but uh, being a woman, normally they call a cow. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> well, you make fun of it yourself. You can say it out. Uh, I was watching this movie called Pitch Perfect and there was this fat lady who learned how to sing and she introduced herself Hi, I'm Fat Amy You know, straight away she says, I'm Fat Amy She says, why do you call yourself Fat Amy? Well, to stop you skinny uh, tweaks from calling me <laughs> and so, so you just, that is, is basically dealing your issues and this applies to all, dealing with your own issues up front and make fun of it, yeah? Thanks First of all, first of all, I'm not fat. It is you guys that is too skinny. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, yeah. Uh, she said she uh, model. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, fashion, right? Yeah. I, I used to be a model before. Yeah, before, not yet after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still stuck in the before, not yet after. Well, sucks to be me, right? Uh, By the way, yeah. Uh, my and my house uh, in Puchong. There's a lot of mosquito. I think uh, uh, if skinny people get bitten by an English mosquito in my, my place, Puchong, that guy or woman will get dengue right. But meet me, the English mosquito, whenever, whenever it beat me, 
the mosquito get obesity. <laughs> and now I think that mosqui- the mosquito get diabetes lah. So I'm inviting ah uh, yeah, this 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 next person I think is very much very many ong lah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm inviting ong Oji ong. So yeah, so many luck ah. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Oji Ong. A lot of people used to call me OG. Oh. <laughs> then I always correct them. Please, I am OG Ong. If you want to remember me, I am a Chinese version of OG Ahmad Daud. <laughs> then suddenly they can remember my name. And I have this wonderful imagination. I always imagine that when I'm hungry, the food will be served. And someone will be standing beside me, waiting to wipe my mouth and clean my plate. I imagine that when I've done my nature call, someone will quickly do the cleaning up for me. And I always imagine when I'm dirty or smelly, someone will bathe for me and make sure I smell good. Ladies and gentlemen, do you prefer this kind of life? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, Casey. Your, your wish will come true. You will soon become my pet dog, baby. I still remember when I bring her home, she was just two months old. I put her on the floor. She take a good look at me. Then she start roaming around my family hall. She find a suitable spot at the center of the hall and suddenly she's caught down. You can see water coming up underneath her body. Oh my! Abby, that's how you declare your territory. <laughs> so I quickly wipe the floor. When I turn back, she stands at the same spot again. And you could see her body curved and start to pull. Oh my, well, well, well. I quickly grabbed a paper and wet tissue. Before I could reach her, she turned her back and looked at the feces, smell it, and start to eat it. Abby, stop it! When I shook at her, she quickly cobbled up everything. Oh my, probably she thought that I tried to fight the food with her. So ladies and gentlemen, would you prefer that kind of life? <laughs> Look at the Abby. I think I prefer that kind of life. Say la vie. Back to you. <laughs> The most disturbing is her her dog named Abby. One one letter short from being baby. <laughs> By the way, I'm inviting Logi for evaluation. <laughs> of course. I'm relating to best. Okay, I'm relating to some other incidents relating to dog. Okay, because I was doing one comedy also on dogs. Here is a lady who's got a dog, the maid's shampoo is 18 ringgit, the dog shampoo is 45 ringgit. Okay? So you see an ex- extreme example. Huh? So if you can talk about the dog, how royally it's treated in the house. They even have a hospital for dogs who got cancer yeah. in Subang Jaya. So royally they are treated. Uh, okay, so if you see an Indian guy sitting here like me inside, huh? Uh, you say my dog somehow doesn't like an Indian veterinarian. <laughs> okay, so you look at that person. Uh, you can look, make fun of that person also. Uh, you were seated there, and dogs, uh, when they look at you, wow, simply amazing, uh, OG. 
she goes to a building called the mall, hunts for food, she slices it and comes and serves me. Really amazing. Okay, so uh, the dog is really amazed how you can hunt. They have to go and hunt for food, you know. And you come, go into a building, you get the food, you slice it and you serve it to them. It's so nice of them. Yeah? Okay. That's all I can say. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's have another stand up, please. Stand up. <laughs> okay. Um, Tita Ray, laughter. Okay. Everybody, do this. <laughs> the other side. <laughs> After Tita Ray, you do Tetola. After, you must serve, isn't it? <laughs> On, again. <laughs> okay, let's do a Japanese shyness laughter. Japanese are very shy people. Do like this. <laughs> okay. This I hope you use some of these examples. Okay. Over to you. Just one comment from Bob. Bob says, I am not fat. You should continue with, I am solid. <laughs> I will be sure to remember that. By the way, I have been doing stand-up comedy for two years. Yeah, I, I did tell you guys. But for me, uh, I have been doing, yeah, that is for the Malay and the English one. But the English one, I have been doing it for one year. Yeah. And I have been gaining, ga uh, being gradually uh, fluent to do it. And you know what? Ever since I do stand up comedy in English, whenever I sleep, all of my dreams turn into an English dream. Wow. Yeah. The problem is, he it has his own subtitle. Are you? Am I dreaming or am I watching DVD? <laughs> By the way, yeah. Uh, you, ha you all have your own nickname you, with your parents and sometimes you uh, and uh, other people here have your own nickname with your sons and daughter, right? Like me, I have my own nickname. They doesn't call me Bob, they call me Disappointment. Ah. Yeah, because they think that I'm not working. Yeah, they think I'm not working, I'm be lazy around at the house. No, it's not, it's not true. Actually, I really, really work hard at doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, uh, to to call the next comedian, I think you can see see her. <laughs> so I'm inviting see see. <laughs> all, you all of you can see see her. <laughs> How are you CC? Thank you. Yes, I'm CC. You see me, and you don't want to get your eyes off me. Yes. First thing, never announce that you are an empty nester. It's really dangerous. Why I say that? First, your in-laws and outlaws will take advantage to make use of your house to be their favorite A, B, and B Google Hub. And then, of course, your multi-level marketing friends will want to sell you everything. To them, being an empty nester implies that all the youngs are no more in the nest. And of course, the biological theory is that your eggs will not be in progress. <laughs> so they assume that you are drying up. They will try to sell you all kinds of gel and moisturizer. Hey, but hello, I am still very wet. <laughs> Swimming, lah. <laughs> and of, now, being an empty nester is a very dangerous species. Why do I say that? You got all the time in the world looking at the mirror. You try to look at all the imperfection and you think you can fix it. You look at the mirror, wow, my hamster cheeks. And then I say, wow, 
My yellow butt is gone now. But then, you know that at the end of the day, your favorite pastime is now shopping. I like the word GST. Great sales time. And of course, worse is when you go to the shopping mall, you know that you're going to blow your credit card because shopping is now your full time. All the sales girls want to sell you something when they look at you. Auntie, push up bra. Auntie, how about a corset? And then of course, the next thing is, how about toning cream? Hello. Excuse me, I cannot avoid gravity. But then, one thing you got to know is that uh, when you have very weak ringgit, you want to reach out and stretch out. Yes, I did buy a corset and it's two size smaller. You really want to stretch and when I stuff my body into it to welcome home my lo kung. Lo kung say, lo po. How come you're walking like you, uh, you are uh, like during our wedding night? How come so stiff one? <laughs> and of course, you say, hey, why you spend that kind of money? Gone for the days, local will say, honey, tonight you look like Angelina Jolie. Your back like walking like pretty woman. Julia Roberts. But of course, there you learn. Never tell anyone you are empty nester. Shh. To me. See, 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 see. <laughs> By the way, whenever, whenever I see, see, uh, uh, I remember my mom. Yeah, because she. She is somewhat the same, but uh, yeah. She, although she is she is Iban, but she was brought up in a Hokkien family, yeah. Because she she used to work there, yeah, for a few few. I don't know. I think a few hundred years. Or, no, no. <laughs> no, my mom is not that old. Because uh, yeah, yeah. Because she after grade uh, twelfth grade, uh, then she she worked. By the way, ah. Uh, <laughs> I'm inviting Shah to get on stage to evaluate C C. Yeah. Hi. So I noticed that you worked on your piece after our last workshop, so that was good. You put in some dialogue in there. I was thinking the initial part when you say emptiness, right? You could have maybe you can insert one line um, explaining what is in, uh, emptiness. Like say, uh, yala all my my my, choo -choo -choo, my my birds all left the nest already la. Instead of birds, you put children or grandchildren or whatever. Okay, one line to explain that so that everybody knows what is emptiness. Just one line to establish that. Uh, I I liked how you went into your Airbnb MLM shopping and your pace was very nice, like very easy to follow. Uh, dressing all very nice, shoe also very nice, <laughs> and. <laughs> and <laughs> I think you still look like Julia, uh, Julia Roberts. Yeah. And in what? Uh, from Logi, yeah, Logi. Master. Again, uh, Cece, I know her for 20 years also. <laughs> Maybe 25, I don't make her look old. <laughs> she works in the share market, eh? still in the share market. Eh? Okay, so you can bring in a lot of share market jokes also. Now, one very nice line I saw was, your in-laws use your place as A, B, and B. <laughs> a B and B breakfast. That was an unusual line, eh, which uh, I thought was very fresh. Okay? And when you talk about the butt, eh, always say, the butt is the last to go. Uh, every first, your wrinkles and all come in and all. The butt is always the last to go. And I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> Very original. And then he went to the supermarket, he went to buy a bra and all that. The girl asked me, what's your size? So stupid, don't know English. You must ask, what size do you take? <laughs> uh, what's my size? 
Okay, I'll tell you 36, 35 myself, don't know. <laughs> okay. So she was full of dialogue. Okay, it's very good. One contest I saw her brought a big mannequin uh, as a prop. Okay, so I'm hoping one day you'll bring the mannequin and talk to the mannequin. You can have a very good dialogue. And the husband has to come and carry for her also to bring the thing on stage. <laughs> okay, one more. Uh, everybody? everybody? Okay. Now, this is a good exercise for ladies. Eh? Ladies, normally the throat, you want it to be smoother. Eh? You don't want it to be baggy. Eh? Okay. Normally, when you are already 45, eh? you got double chin, double neck and all that. Eh? Okay. So, everybody, do like this. Did you know the HSBC lion? Yeah. Every branch, the lion faces different directions. Eh? Okay. So, you're going to have the lion laughter. Can you feel the next baby? Over in the morning, do. Over to you. Hey, <laughs> you know what? I I always do that eh, after I after I have the meal, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. It's not good make, make, making fun of bulimic uh, person. <laughs> By the way, uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of my friends ask, tell me that, hey Bob, your motorcycle is too noisy lah. A little that he know that it's not motorcycle that is sound that noisy. It's my stomach. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand about uh, yeah. I don't understand about double standards because whenever a woman cook for the one that she loves, she is so uh, she people will say she's beautiful. She's empowering to cook for the one that she loves. She's a dependent woman. But whenever I did it, yeah, whenever I did it, she would say, "Who are you? What are you doing in my house with my husband?" Yeah. Is true or is it not? Eh? I don't know. So I want to call the next comedian whose name is Yes Man. Yes Man. Yeah, Yes Man lah. <laughs> yes Man. <laughs> fun jokes, fun jokes. What's up, everyone? Um, <laughs> My name is Yasmin. I am a small business owner. I make and sell ice cream. So one of the more popular flavors in my lineup is um, chewy chocolate. So people ask me though, why chewy? The thing is, my product is halal certified by Jakim, so I cannot call it better than sex. So. <laughs> True story, guys. True story. Um, I called up um, a seller on Muda. So I wanted to buy a micro weighing scale because um, I needed to measure my ingredients in grams. So he came over to my kitchen. He looked a little bit dodgy. And my area, it's somewhere in Aradaman, sorry, my kitchen, is like a, they say it's like a Hong Kong Kung Si Gelap place. <laughs> so um, I opened my door halfway and he was trying to peek over my shoulder. So um, he looked at me and said, Aka buat business apa? And I told him, uh, ice cream. Ah, ice cream. He did that. And I was like, apparently he thought I was running a crystal math lab, a shabu lab. <laughs> I mean, come on, I failed chemistry. <laughs> and um, I'm a mommy uh, to a clingy four year old, so I am just happy to be here. <laughs> and, um, my daughter, I breastfed her for two years. So uh, back then, um, there were times where I felt um, like I was, um, I was uh, a tit attached to a woman. <laughs> so if I were in a, if we were in a film, um, my tits and I should have like separate credits, like tits, a woman with tits. <laughs> so uh, thank goodness. Um, I'm a single mommy now, <laughs> not to villainize my husband or my ex-husband or anything, but he tends to threaten me. He said, um, you know, you know that I can marry up to four, so I have three more slots. And I told him, yeah, but remember, if you, have, if you re marry three more, you're going to have three more mother-in-laws. So, 
And um, um, back to my ice cream. Sometimes I sling my popsicles at food festivals. And uh, what it, my, my ice cream is, it, it kind of attracts like hipsters and millennials because I think it's too pretty and doesn't need the filter. So their Instagram feed is very satisfied. <laughs> and sometimes um, a hipster will come by and say, um, do you have anything lactose-free, gluten-free, fat-free? And I'll tell them, um, here, have some ice cubes. Knock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm a struggling startup, you know. When I tell people, oh, I, I, when people know what I do for a living, so they'll say, oh, popsicles are such a fun and happy business. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> so I swear there were times where I could hear my money saying, what the hell were you thinking, you know? <laughs> I would like to have um, a moment of silence for all my money that died. <laughs> In the early, you know, startup years. So uh, I, I've got to go in a second. So, well, um, my company is powered by Intense. It's not because I'm cheap. Well, well, yeah, I'm cheap. All right. So thank you very much. Good one. By the way, I'm also can marry you up to four percent, but I cannot even I cannot even afford to marry one person. Uh, my life. So I'm inviting Monty for evaluating Jasmine. Monty, can? Uh, okay, I just, just uh, uh, you start off with a very strong line, very interesting, and you talk about uh, I like the part you, you say you, why you call it chewy because you is <laughs> registered with Jack Kim and you cannot call it better than sex. Say, so, yeah. oh, that's a good line. Uh, a lot of surprises. I, I think one of the strong thing about uh, your your presentation is that a lot of surprises, a lot of twists and a lot of turns. So I think that is where. We want to work on. Um, I like the one, the part you say, um, you got a husband, an ex-husband, <laughs> you can marry three more, you get three more mother-in-laws, that's threatening. <laughs> uh, that is a good, good, uh, good uh, topic to build on, you know. Okay, uh, if you want to do one, is that I want to remind all the um, um, Malay men who wants to marry four, um, uh, with wife, you must remember, you also get four mother-in-laws. <laughs> and uh, you know what mother-in-laws are like. So, so it, it, it just can build on that. I think there's, um, some good, very good, um, nice, motivating story there. Um, Logi? Yeah. Oh, when you come up on stage wearing a tudong, we expect you to be very restricted, very reserved. Okay? So when you blow up the part when you talk about jakim, <laughs> people <laughs> when you talk about sex. Okay, so you have a very good angle there. And then you talk about the ice cubes. That, I think, was very original. Yeah. Very original. So make sure you copyright that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then this one, I'm going to steal. Money that died. <laughs> so I told you, comedy is discovery. Yeah? So one line I might steal and use in that. When I'm an MC. Okay? Nowadays, they're looking for MCs who can do comedy. You make it more money than just being a normal MC. Now, I want you to try to use this. Eh? This is one line I learned from a guy who manufactures ice cream. Eh? Let me ask this question as though I'm a, you are asking. Eh? Uh, durian flavored ice cream, what color is it? Yeah. Yellow. Vanilla, what color is the ice cream? Orange. Strawberry, what color is the ice cream? Pink. How come strawberry is pink when the fruit is red? <laughs> What's your answer? What's your answer? I'll ask the ice cream person itself. <laughs> How come strawberry is pink when it is when the strawberry is red? Durian inside yellow, but the ice cream is yellow. Red flushed. <laughs> no, some people will say you mix red with milk, it becomes pink. Okay? But that's not the case. Just that the guy who designed a strawberry ice cream wanted it pink. <laughs> he can even have black ice cream. We just have to put color black. <laughs> because, well, I met one British guy who, who told me he makes sweets. So he told me uh, he, durian flavor, all that he's got. Say, so now is uh, durian season, you can have durian flavored ice cream. No, we don't have to wait for the season. We just 
taste durian and we put two chemicals together or three chemicals, we get durian flavored. No durian is inside there. Okay? So try and use this. I don't know how you're going to do it. I'm giving you an idea. Try and make it. And your very strong angle is people expect you to be very reserved. But here you come and blow things up. <laughs> here we have a quiet person. Huh? Diam diam ubi. <laughs> okay. We down to the last comedian. Ooh, give a round of applause. Yeah, you you still stay here. Yeah. Have you have you guys ever? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, wait, wait, ah, uh, wait, ah, uh, my joke, ah. Uh, see, I still didn't tell my joke, ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, second last. Ah uh -huh. yeah, second last. I I was wrong. I didn't I didn't get the notice. Yeah. By the way, I want to tell you. Have you ever uh, this year? Have you uh, celebrated the Valentine's Day? Yeah, you, you guys celebrated it? Yeah. Valentine's Day? No, no. Yeah, I want to tell you, uh, by, by the way, I want to tell you guys something about Valentine's Day. Every Valentine's Day, people give the one that they, they love a flower, right? But uh, to, to, to show uh, it, is, it is a love to signify, to signify uh, the only word that I cannot say, to signify as uh, love. Uh, yeah, yeah, like that. So, so I don't think giving flower is a good thing because flower flower is going to die is going to wither around one week so it doesn't it doesn't signify signify as a, as a one true love uh, forever love I think the, the thing that is we need to change the tradition from giving a bouquet of flower we gave we give a bouquet of fried chicken yeah, yeah a bouquet of fried chicken because it's the thing that you can do it together with your pasangan lah, with your significant others. Why? You know why? Because the fat from the chicken going to stay longer than any relationship are. <laughs> and 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 you can show and you can show the yeah, and you can show the evidence to everybody through the through the stretch mark yeah. Like this. This is stretch mark from Valentine 91, 92, 96, 93. This is not. Uh, this is not stretch mark. This is step wound because she uh, stabbed me when I broke up with her. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, apparently she bring knife whenever we go to date. Uh, I don't know. So I'm. Bring, uh, I I hope that she doesn't do that <laughs> to to her boyfriend or what. So I'm bringing Juliana. So. Around Juliana, the, the grab driver. Alamak, she grabbed me. <laughs> All right, I just, hi everyone, I'm Juliana. I just grabbed the microphone from there. Yeah. So, as you know, grab driver does only a very simple thing. All I do is to grab you, you, and you put in my car and I drive. That is a grab car driver's job. For me, there are a few secrets you got to know about being a grab car driver. Sometimes, have you ever encountered uh, drivers who are extremely friendly and talkative? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the thing is, the truth is, we are not that friendly. You know why? Because we want to go to the toilet. But we don't dare to tell you all when you are in my car. So that I, I will just say, okay, I will just talk a lot, talk fast, and then I will get distracted by my own pain and pressure. <laughs> in my bladder. The second secret is how I drive my car. There are two types of guy on earth. One is the Leng Jai. The second one is the Hamsap Jai. When I saw the Hamsap Jai, I mean I can smell it, but I have, the, I have this uh, radar that is very strong to detect what guy is Leng Jai, what guy is Hamsap Jai. So at the moment you detect a hint of Hamsapness uh, in the guys, straight away, my car become a Myvi, become an Aston Myvi, James Bond car, but my version. I start to drive, room, 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 and then by the time before the, he even processed his humsupness, he's already there. <laughs> <laughs> then, the second thing is when I detected a Leng Jai, Leng Jai is straightforward, just the eyes only will do. Don't need to go through radar or any astro system. Don't need, it's very simple and straightforward. So what I do is, very simple, I drive like this fella. 
Yeah, this little turtle ah, drive la 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 la. So the drive ready. Then you know what I do. At night, the time is the best part. You just need to turn on the car light. It looks like candlelight dinner. Perfect scene for candlelight dinner, but minus the hamburgers. Because if with the hamburger, we have candlelight dinner in the car. And the music I use is Bole Chudian, Bole Kangana. Very romantic one. The thing is, unfortunately, he realized something is amiss with me. Why are you always using the jam roads? Then I will tell him. Because my GPS find you very hot. I don't know whether is it a girl or guy, but it doesn't matter. It finds you so hot that he decided to keep you longer in my car. <laughs> and I like the music ah, where we, the moment the music went to the climax of any Bollywood music lah, then um, uh, the music will stop and then the traffic light will turn red and then I will like, look at him and then I'll do some of the Bollywood moves and then he will have a lot of fun. Lah. I mean, but the thing is, he's a bit scared also lah, because I think maybe unintentionally I show my humsupness through that. <laughs> okay, so you now know that ladies also can be humsup. <laughs> so for me, that's, that's the best part because he gets scared. I don't know that actually I have this secret power as well. Then for me, I was... Uh, then another way of driving slow is how, you know, when you see the green light, don't speed. You see the green light, you have to press your brakes. Because by the time you press the brakes, you reach the front, it's already red light. Buying another few minutes of his time. And then the best part is airport rides. For me, when I drive Ling Jai, la, airport rides must be very careful because road is very straight and I tend to go fast. Sometimes I'm on cloud night to the point that I drive extremely fast because I believe that I'm driving on clouds. <laughs> Until finally he have to say, please slow down. I'm very scared. Scared that finally I go heaven before my time. <laughs> so that's all. This is just a few of the secrets I survived as a Grab driver. Enjoy your next Grab ride. Bye. Yeah, thank you. By the way, so who going to evaluate her? Monty, yeah, Monty. Let's invite Monty to evaluate her. Okay. Give, give five star on Grab. <laughs> uh, did he pay us any uh, advertising fee? Uh, I, I like the word, uh, the level of hum uh. <laughs> I, I think um, from the first time I saw you doing this same uh, material, you have actually, what you managed to do is you took seven, uh, eight minutes and compress it into two to three to four minutes and you can see the difference between the speed and the crispness of your thing because you cut off a lot of things unnecessary. I think that's good, okay? Um, that's one, one thing you, I like about it. Of course, you're talking about... Uh, your, and when you go into that mode and keep coming in with lines after lines, it works for you. So you keep that kind of momentum going for you. Um, what other, what other things I want to talk about? Yeah. Actually, GPS, uh, you know, maybe you want to talk about this line. You know, uh, someone always comment about, I use, uh, use Waze. And in my Waze, I got a female voice called Susan. And my, my friend, a uh, lady, uh, my colleague, he said, why come uh, at every turn, uh, in three, five hundred meters, keep left. In three hundred meters, keep left. Uh, so why, why, my, your, your Waze uh, talk so much, uh, I say it's a woman one. <laughs> so you may see whether you can use it as a man or you are Because there's also another one called, uh, uh, I think, um, uh, uh, Colonel KFC, something like that one. So you may want to do that, or the bike, Backstreet Boy, Backstreet Boy, turn that, turn that kind of thing. So you, you may want to add on because you, it's within your, that, the theme of a grab. So uh, that's my take. Yeah. Julian, okay. have I met you before? Yeah. Oh, where? Uh, in your MC workshop. Oh, I see. Okay, it looks so familiar. Sometimes I don't know where I've seen them. Uh, I feel very shy to say hello. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> she's full of energy, very original topic. You know, there's one fact about Iranian drivers, they always have kidney stones. Taxi drivers got kidney stones because they don't get on and go to the toilet. Okay, it's a very valid point, you know. Okay, so 
you can add that also. Okay, something to do with, with kidney stones. So I have to go to the toilet. Tell them that. Now, he just mentioned this in passing. Give me a five. You all know the grab drivers and all that. You have to rate. Eh? You say this. Do you know how I always get five for my rating? <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I see the 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 Lang Chai at the back, eh? I can see his eyes. He can see my eyes. When eyes and eyes meet, you don't need words. <laughs> okay. And I put him, put make, give him one compliment. At least I say you got a nice tie. You have a nice spectacles. Something nice. Remember, utang mesti dibayar. Okay, utang budi mesti dibayar. So they must say something nice to you. They cannot say something nice. They'll put five. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how I score five all the time. Okay, so always compliment your guests who come. Come, the passenger coming in. One area is when you smile, uh, driving in, on cloud nine, eh? okay? There you go, serious. I was driving on cloud nine because you were smiling, okay? okay? I was traveling on cloud nine. Then the audience will laugh on their own, okay? That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, one, 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 point, one point about, uh, Bob mentioned about Valentine's Day just now about giving a flower or giving food. Eh? Next time for Valentine's Day, give them cauliflower. It is a flower and a food also. <laughs> hey, Juliana, you know how to raise your five-star uh, rating, right? Pick the mute guy. <laughs> I cannot say anything. <laughs> so, five star, right? So, by the way, when I was a kid, I used to be called Little Drum because my parents always beat me. <laughs> ah, yeah, my parents, the Malay parents. Yeah, you know what? Whenever I cry, when my parents beat me, they always told me, "Keep quiet, keep quiet." You, you, you don't keep quiet. I, I, I. Oh, that. <laughs> oh, see, that joke very, very die. Ah. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> uh, so it's a new joke. So it's a new joke. I, 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 I buang lah. So, by the way, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> the other day, yeah, the other day I was waiting to get on the lift. So there, there were so many people to, trying to get on the lift. Whenever the lift come down, so many people come out, and people keep rushing in to get inside the lift. So many people, and then the lift, the lift, the lift alarm sound. So many people look at me like you all right now. I can hear a voice saying that, "Hey, hey, nak gemuk, nyusahkan, lift tak naik." Thank you, Dad. <laughs> people keep judging me and blaming me for the lift. I wasn't even on the leaf. So bringing up the next, the next comedian, yeah, but the next comedian. I hope she wasn't like my dad, keep blaming all me all for all of his fault. So I'm inviting shock, 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 shock. Got team song ready, yeah. Oh, yo. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Shak. Uh, not, I've been doing comedy for about one, one year, how many months now? Four months, one year, four months. Whenever I tell someone I'm a stand up comedian, uh, there are two types of people, uh, two types of people. One group, uh, they will say, you know, uh, hey, shark, shark, I got this joke. Uh. You, you tell uh, this joke, sure, funny one. And then they tell me one long story. Uh. No punchline, nothing. Okay, la, listen, la, friend, la, listen. And then the other group, uh, the other group, oh, shark, uh, really, uh, you tell sto uh, jokes. Uh. Hey, tell me one joke now. You think what, uh, this one automated joke telling machine, is it? But you know, nowadays, uh, it's very becoming a bit difficult to be a comedian in Malaysia. You know why? Anything you say, everybody gets offended. You know, I can't say, uh, Blachan smells really bad. 
you know, you cook with it, and at first it smells bad. I don't even want to say how, how the smell smells like, you know, lah, kan? Uh, but I can't say this. You know, then the Chris wielding keepers of the Balachan culture will come after me. And then, you know, chicken feet wonton noodle. Already one ton of noodle, and then chicken feet, because all other part of the chicken are not fleshy enough, you need to suck the toes. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I, I can't say things like that. Then the ch- chicken feet warriors will come after me. And then, you know, I'm not even going into that one. Pork belly, la, pork uh, brains, la, pork balls. La. Oh, yo. And then, uh, you know, I can't say, uh, the wife of a certain prominent Malaysian dictator uh, looks like a face uh, has been botoxed to kingdom come. You can say something about the dictator, maybe get away with it. La. You say things about the wife, I tell you, you'll be wiped off from the face of the earth. <laughs> Literally. You know, and then I can't say kingdom come. That's like a direct phrase from the Bible, no. And then you don't want to offend the Christians. You know why not? They'll pray for you. You know, they put hashtag pray for shark <laughs> all over Facebook. And I'm telling you, this prayer thing is work. Last time I used to go to church. And then after that, I stopped going, la, lazy. La. And then, you know, they had prayer meetings special, no, for me to go back to church. And then, uh, it worked. I went back. I went back. I went back to say bye to my friends. La, but, it, you know, it worked. And then, uh, you know, the last time uh, I shared this, this story, uh, uh, after I said, and then I, I walked off the stage, like, it was a bit dark, you know. One lady came, came running behind me, you know. And then I turned around, now uh, one matsale lady, white lady, you know. And then, I, then she, she said, Shark, you're very good. Oh, I said, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then uh, she handed me a card. Then I thought, oh my God, it's like my Hollywood, lah, Hollywood big break, you know. And then it was a bit dark. I didn't see the, the fine print. Eh? The top there said, soul space. And then, and then I thought, oh, this is it, lah, man. I'm getting my Hollywood break. And then you know what she said to me? Shark, we have services here every Sunday. Why don't you come and join us? It was a church. You know, 20 years, huh, they're still praying for me. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I, I, I cannot talk about uh, Islam because I'm non-Muslim. Okay, fair lah, I'm not Muslim. But I also cannot talk about Hindu, Hinduism. You know why? Because I'm not a practicing Hindu. You know, I can't say I do uh, the coconut, you know, typism, all uh, thousands of coconut, waste time, waste money. Cannot. They will brand me a coconut. You know, huh, brown on the outside, white on the inside. But actually, I know, like, very, I'm very Indian, actually. Uh, then, uh, you know, talking of all these things, uh, uh, those of you aspiring to be comedian, all that, uh, I got warning for you, you know. The pay is crap, okay? And then a lot of hard work. And then thirdly, uh, your family and friends won't talk to you anymore. <laughs> you know why? Because anything they say uh, can be used on stage, ma. <laughs> Uh, but they one got pro and con la. The, the pro is they will start talking to you nicely. The con is they will stop inviting you for uh, dinners, birthday party function, no more free food. <laughs> so that's it, folks. Thank you. So, uh, Logi, do you want to evaluate Shah? <laughs> Ah, the evaluator getting evaluated now, huh? <laughs> okay, Shark is a seasoned uh, comedian. What's the female name for comedian? Comedian. comedian. D-I-E-N-E, uh, comedian. Okay, Shark, I would expect you to make fun of your clothing. Okay. <laughs> uh, can you all guess my full-time job? <laughs> I'm not a maid. Okay. <laughs> I see her as a maid uh, wearing the thing. Uh. <laughs> I'm a teacher. Kindergarten teacher. They drive me nuts. One time they, the whole class was making noise. I want pandemonium, I shouted. The students all wonder what is pandemonium? Pandemonium means noise, you know? <laughs> It's not what you say, it's how you say it. <laughs> okay, so she touched on <laughs> many topics which are almost sensitive. <laughs> okay, so she, I don't know whether, where, how well it will be received. Huh? 
Okay? I normally, when you take photographs, uh, I will say, uh, cheese, everybody takes cheese. Uh, say the Malay cheese, Blachan! <laughs> when you say Blachan, your face will smile. Uh. Okay? Uh, <laughs> so, Monty has got one, some jokes about uh, Chinese food. Uh. Okay? Uh, about your school days. Uh. Can you tell about that? That oh, yeah, you yeah. eat the uh, certain okay. parts of the pig. Uh. Okay. okay. This one, uh, this one, of course, we are digging into our archive. Mm. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they, we used to talk about uh, you know food. You know, and uh, we Chinese have we believe food is our medicine. You know what? You whenever you have problem, yeah, yes. Whenever you have problem, you eat the right food. Your your problem will be solved. You know, when you study, your eyes tired. We eat. You know, uh, when you study, uh, my mom mom will cook pig's brain. Because we Chinese believe uh, the pigs can replace every part of our body, you know. So when we study, we use pig's brain. When we talk a lot, uh, we, we boil pig's tongue soup, you know. Uh, so when we stomach ache, uh, pig's stomach soup, you know. So everything, uh, when we walk a lot, uh, pigs trotters, you know. So, so we, we, we are replaced. So Chinese are practically pig, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oh, which one? Oh, yeah, we failed the exam, we pick brains at that one, yeah? <laughs> and we failed the exam, huh? you stupid like a pig. <laughs> and she wonder why. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so food can be a very good thing, you know, culture and food, um, the coconut, uh, white, uh, brown and white. So you think about things that relate to yourself and make fun of yourself and, uh, you know, and uh, hit it on the thing. You know, Loki and myself, we've been performing for many years so, and um, since 1999. And uh, we had many good times, and uh, I, I don't know why you say the returns are crap. <laughs> but I think that the thing is that you have to work on it. We, uh, we had a mentor friend many years ago. Uh, he gave us a lot of good advice. He said, um, you know, you must do 20 free talks, 20 at 500, 20 at 1,000. So because, in other words, you build your reputation over a period of time. And uh, of course, this guy passed away. Not because he gave us advice, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, Paul, Paul, uh, uh, Paul passed away. Uh, he passed away because he played badminton suddenly. You know, for 20 years he smoked and drink and whatever. And then suddenly he wanted to be healthy, he played badminton, and then one smash, that's it. Uh, he won the game one time, Kautim. <laughs> now, even death can be very funny when you talk about it. So, now, now just how Loki mentioned one thing, you're touching on. A sensitive issue. Now, I would encourage you to not to shy away from it because comedy is a very important co uh, communication tool where we use to deal with sensitive issues. We deal with race, we deal with sex issue, um, politic uh, political issues, and, um, and uh, that these are things that we are skating on all the time. But you, without these kind of issues, you don't deal with it. If you talk normally, you become ranting, like, like, you know, but when you talk about comedy, it's so fun, you know. So to talk about comedy, I know I, I want to just uh, show you, uh, bring back an old uh, something for you all, me and Logi. Okay, don't do one point. Okay, uh, on behalf of the uh, uh, Majelis Majelis Ini, we have a very special guest tonight. He's all the way back from India and from building roads in India. He was a former works minister, the longest serving minister in the world. Uh, <laughs> Well, and uh, he is back from India. Please put your hands together for to Yang Berbahagia, Dato Sri S. Sami Bellu. Dato Sri, how are you? <clears throat> Fine, thank you. Uh, how is India? India is wonderful. Life. It's a beautiful country. You must come and visit. You know. Okay. <laughs> wonderful. And what were you doing in India? Well, uh, you know what they say, where there is a will, there is a highway. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we are building highways all the way. La. Oh, I see. Yeah. So uh, are you taking part, you know, you're looking better and better. Mm. So are you taking part in the next coming election? Are you making a comeback? Uh, uh, you know, everybody is asking me, you know, why don't you come back? Ayo, why don't you come back, you know? I told them, uh, I am not a politician. You know what is the difference? I am a statesman. Huh? A politician is only interested in the next election. Mm. The statesman is interested in the next generation. Oh, oh. I see. Mm. So politics and all is very short term. La. Statesmanship okay. is long term. Uh, see, but uh, the thing is, 
we just want to ask this question. Now, mm. you've, been in, you've been winning mm. Sungai Siput for the longest time, mm. and you suddenly lost on your birthday yeah, in it, 2008. Yes. What happened there, actually? It is actually a very auspicious day. La. <laughs> I don't know why they mess. You know, just like Chinese men, you know, mm. you know when they marry their wife, uh, their wife is like a salted fish, you know. Huh? Okay. Uh -huh. Every man likes fresh fish every day. Uh. If you touch the salted fish, uh, uh. you can get cancer, you know. Uh -huh. So you can only have a little bit of the wife. Uh. So more of the fresh fish every day. Ah. So every time when they have the same politician in Sungai Siput, they want to change. Ah. So I have to let go. La. Let <laughs> them eat some salted fish and die. La. <laughs> yeah. Okay, after this time, when will you be coming back to visit us then? Mm. Everybody is asking me, you know, when will I come back? When will I come back? You know, I will tell them, la, Bila burong terbang ke laut, then apabila ikan datang ke darat, saya akan muncul. Can you repeat one more time uh, in English? Repeat again one more time. That's a double oxymoron, you know. Repeat again one more time. Never mind. When the birds fly to the sea and when the fish come back to the land, I will surface. Oh, very good. Okay. But one, one, one last question I really want to know. Mm. You know, the education system now, there's a lot of flip flop. You know, the maths and science, they mm. want to do it in English and do it in Barca. Mm. Uh, what is your opinion with maths and science being do, uh, taught in English and Bahasa? Well, we have no problems with the government when they want to speak uh, English, uh, maths, and all that in Bahasa. As long as they can do science and maths in Tamil, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. With that, thank you very much, Yamra Thank Bagia. you, thank you. Well, we already arrived at the end of the open mic night. Let, open mic ladies night. Ah, so clap, clap, la. Thank, thank you for being here and staying here. And thank you for all the ladies that have performed tonight. And special thanks to Logi, Monty, and Shah for, yeah, for evaluating you guys and for sharing, yeah, for sharing, uh, yeah, for sharing, uh, for sharing something, uh, <laughs> for sharing something in, uh, in sh some advice, some uh, insight to do how to do your own comedy sets. Yeah, thank you. What do you comment? Alama. <laughs> Alama. <laughs> I just want to give to Shak. Yeah. So last time, it's very difficult to talk sensitive issues, political issues. So we created a fictitious land called Bole Land. <laughs> so whatever we talk, it's about Bole Land, nothing to do with Malaysia. Okay? And we used to say, do you all know where is Bole Land? Okay? You know Thailand, okay? In between, there's a long thing sticking out. That is called the peninsula. Below that, there are two round things, Singapore and Batam. Okay. Now we got a new, we have created a new land called the original La La Land. We are the only country in the world that speaks with the La. So now we are copywriting it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poster coming out soon. So you see, advertisement already done all over the world, La La Land. But we just put an extra H there. <laughs> and we already got some skits already. Nice. Old skits put inside, original La La Land, Monty and Lugi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, with that, I just want to make some announcement. Quick one is um, June and uh, June uh, second. Well, I just like Shark is second and uh, probably the fourth of Wednesday. We'll be for second. We'll be running a workshop and fourth will be another performance. So it's open to all. Okay. So we will talk about other parts of the material and the performance. So um, we will teach from six to nine. Yes, Shark. Oh yeah, the end of June, right? Yeah. Then yeah, we but then we do the workshop first, lah. 
we do one day first, uh, the second, uh, second Wednesday. The first Wednesday was taken already. So uh, for those of Buka Pasa, we Buka Pasa here together. Right? And I guess some, depends on who belanja. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we will continue doing this uh, over the next um, four or five months. I think we want to build this community. Again, okay? it's open to all. And to keep trying, we recorded this thing so we can keep improving ourselves and to be a better speaker, comedian, and of course, um, build more friends. Lah. So I want to thank Bob for tonight. Okay, thank Bob for tonight. Uh, can I, you want to end? For, may I end? Uh, you want to end? Okay, lah. okay. Lah. okay lah. We, just, uh, uh, we thank Bob. Thanks all the ladies from um, everywhere. And guys, Casey, thank you. Terry, yeah. Uh, and thanks to Logi. And uh, of course, uh, um, I must tell you one last story. It was a real story. The Star publication invited me. You can call me up, Monty. Yes. Uh, I'm the editor. Yes. <laughs> you are the editor. I start I didn't calling. We would like to invite you and your partner to come to KLCC, the Philharmonic. Uh, we have a special event. We have a special box. Come over. So I arrive and with my wife. And they asked me, Monty, where is your partner? <laughs> 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 with that, thank you very much. Good night. Okay. Thank you.